It's so beautiful. Magico. E, e, e trasparente, e colore. Because the glass is a magic material. Glass is very important because uh, uh, it's a transparency uh, and it's the colors and and you can work and modify as you like. It's magic. Vittorio truly is a magician. He transforms colored glass rods into magnificent creatures of his own creation. Like this is incredible. This is, I, I just can't believe it's made with glass and I want to see how you can manipulate glass to do what it does. It responds um, in a very live way, almost, uh, almost like an animal. And, um, and it's very challenging. There's, a, a, there's so much to learn. Vittorio is showing us everything that he's ever done, and uh, it's great.
Tu non devi essere né troppo caldo e né troppo freddo. Not too hot, cold and not too hot. Okay. Oh, Vittorio is just one of the most generous teachers I've ever met. He's, he, he doesn't have any secrets and he shows you not only one way to do it, but then he's delighted to show you three or four more ways. It really takes a talented, incredible person to be able to make these detailed pieces in such short amount of time. and be able to teach other people while you're doing it. <laughs> scusa, scusa, scusa. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I understand. Uh, no. Oh, I know. It okay. doesn't look like a secret. <laughs> troppo, troppo corto. Yeah. Corto. Uh -huh. It's well known that on Murano, secrecy is prevalent. And it is extraordinary that Vittorio is willing to share his techniques and his art with the world. 200 years ago, Glass workers weren't allowed off the island of Murano, and they would have been executed for sharing these kind of secrets with outsiders. It's so generous of Vittorio to have spent decades and decades first inventing a style and inventing many techniques, and then perfecting them and then sharing them with us.
I had heard stories that when he was young and had worked in Murano, in the furnace, he was a very talented glass blower. Then he had said he, st he started, he bought a torch and he started making little miniatures to sell. Vittorio started this in 1963 as a hobby. He was working as a furnace worker in a factory. He had to invent all of these things himself. There wasn't anybody making bugs at that time at the lamp. This is all pure Vittorio. And what he knows is based on generations of knowledge. So there, there's a great deal of subtlety to what he has to show us. Vittorio has been doing insects and small living creatures for so long that he is now the master of the miniature. Oh, look at that thing. God, it's almost difficult to hold it. It's, it all, it, it. <laughs> It almost looks dangerous. Pelicoloso. Penso, sento e pelicoloso. <laughs> wow. Gee. Quanti parti in un gambo, una gamba? Un... Una gamba ci sono cinque, cinque parti. One, two, uno, due, tre, quattro. Ma quanti colori? Perché ha... Io mescolo, sì, io mescolo i colori. Delle volte ecco, per fare questo io mescolo allora uno, sì. due, tre, quattro, cinque colori. <ride> wow. Qui ci sono delle rive diverse. <ride> Dopo qui ogni, 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 ogni pezzo io butto un colore diverso che viene fuori. Dopo questa canna qui ha due colori lo stesso. Okay. Viene fuori le sfumature. Viene fuori... This. This is scary. <clears throat> this is scary. I feel like yeah, I feel like it's dangerous to hold it, like it's gonna bite.
studies the insects from nature? Or? Um, at the beginning, but uh, later he, he bought some books, uh, uh, videotapes, um, and we like very much to go uh, to the natural history museums uh, to, to get the inspiration. Vittorio's father was a fisherman, and Vittorio grew up on the water, knowing nature, loving nature. The octopus and the fish are really, for Vittorio, a part of his history. Those are the things he saw coming out of the water in the nets with his father. So ever since, Vittorio has been inspired by this infinite palette of subject matter from nature. Looking at the video, you tend to forget just how tiny most of the details on his creatures are. I would have thought to lay the red somehow 
around, you know. Yeah, you have to, he's building yeah. from the inside out right. and from the bottom exactly. up. Exactly, yeah, 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 it's a totally yeah, yeah, different yeah. way totally of different thinking. Concept. I think you have to just get used to that thinking in negative space, maybe, you know, instead of thinking as a red, as a color. Well, it seems like if glass was alive and it had opinions, you know, it just respects Vittorio, it agrees with him. It always seems to go the way he wants it to. tempo in glass, whether it's furnace working or lamp working, is inherently quick. The glass cools quickly and you have a lot to do in a very brief time, so you have to move very quickly. Glass is a most unusual material. It goes from rock hard to almost liquid and everything in between. The hotter it is, the more it glows, and the easier it is to manipulate. The glow is the key to the heat. It tells him how hot the glass is and how much longer he has to work the glass before he has to go back into the flame. And it's breathtaking how fast he moves from start to finish. Awesome. It, <laughs> I, want a, I want some uh, <clears throat> oil and vinegar and oh, it's just gorgeous. Steam it. Look at that. Oh, this guy is, this guy is so amazing. Just a, fantastic.
This is what lamp working is all about. You can't do this at the furnace. This you can't begin to do on the furnace. This is really what it's made for. The glass tells them, depending on what color it is, whether it's going to move or not move. For example, he, uh, with tiny, tiny feelers on a bug, he uses a lighter to just move the antenna a little bit so it's absolutely perfectly symmetrical with the other antenna. Symmetry in glass is always a problem. Making a vase with two handles symmetrical and exactly the same is a big problem. At the lamp, making these insects, everything has to be done perfectly, but it has to be done perfectly twice and perfectly symmetrically. That's a magical thing. Sometimes when you watch him work, you see he uses a relatively large glob of glass that is pretty liquid to use as a tool, and he can make the tiniest of, of legs and details. It's amazing that some of these teeniest elements of things like antennae and limbs are made from these big amorphous blobs of hot glass. This is blob control to the nth degree. Vittorio is making a microscopic crab with two claws, eight legs, and in two colors. Incredible. This is the smallest lamp-worked object I've ever seen. This may be the smallest lamp-worked object ever made.
camera's magnification lets us see things that we otherwise wouldn't see. There are all sorts of subtleties involved. When you watch the footage again and again, you begin to see more and more. It's a marvelous demonstration of glass control. In watching Vittorio work, there is something for everyone. For the nature lover, there is this incredibly accurate imitation of nature. For the artist, there is the creative and fanciful part of what Vittorio puts of himself in the objects. For perfectionists, there's a kindred spirit to watch. This is the fanciful, very creative part of Vittorio. These are more Vittorio the artist than just Vittorio the craftsman. Maybe what it's really all about is pursuit of perfection. Vittorio truly is a poet. He's completely transcended technique. He speaks about nature through glass.
Mai qui. Mai. Never done Ma non è importanza, non è importanza. L'importante è dove va meglio lei, può attaccarsi di qua o anche di qua. <laughs> the class for me has been an incredible experience, partially because I don't know Italian. So it's been a crash course in learning Italian at the same time as learning a lot about glass. And so my eyes have had to do a lot of learning and I haven't been able to rely as much on, on the words for describing what's going on with the glass. And that has, has actually helped me really, really understand what he is doing. All of his pieces start out as a ball of glass, a symmetrical ball of glass. And, you know, very quickly and skillfully, he can morph it into anything. It's very rare that you find an artist who's created his own medium. That's exactly what Vittorio has done. It's amazing. Like all great artists, Vittorio is constantly reinventing himself. He's always striving for something new and better. Here, Vittorio is finishing off an antenna over and over and over again until he's absolutely satisfied. That's what it's really all about, pursuit of perfection. A few years ago, I was in a friend's beach house, and on the mantle, there was a really beautiful collection of seashells. So I started picking them up one by one, admiring them, and I turned one over, and there was a little impression of what appeared to be a VC. And I turned it back over, looked at the other side, it was a shell, I was sure. It never crossed my mind that that was the VC insignia, the little embossed insignia, of Vittorio Costantini. I was incredulous that this thing was glass. It had fooled me. It was Vittorio Costantini, again, imitating nature so perfectly that it took me a good 10 minutes to resolve the fact that this was made from glass by Vittorio and it wasn't a real seashell. Bravo, Vittorio, bravo, molto bravo. <laughs>